What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor channel. In today's video, we're talking about and breaking down my final income results from my income portfolio for the month of April, 2024. I'm gonna break down for you exactly how much income I generated, the investments I utilized, and what I think is pretty cool, a way to generate consistent cash flow, even though the market really didn't behave the way we wanted it to. <laughs> All right, guys, we're looking at my April 2024 max cash flow spreadsheet, which this spreadsheet, which tracks all of my trades, is available to you as well to utilize, along with all of my other spreadsheets, by joining the Average Joe Investor Patreon community, which also includes the Discord community as well. You'll have access to a bunch of different Average Joe Investors generating cash flow in their own portfolios, all the trades I make in my own portfolio as well. And if you want to become one of the investors in the community that works with me one-on-one -on -one to answer any questions and really get started from the ground up in generating cash flow through your own portfolio, make sure to check out the exclusive access and the VIP tiers as well. If you want to learn more, check out the link down in the description below. All right, so we are going to dive into the results here, but before we do that, I want to make sure there's a clear understanding on exactly what strategy I utilize and the investments that I use. So like I've been doing in the past, I have been utilizing a wheel strategy, essentially a combination of both cash secured puts and covered calls to generate daily cash flow with daily options. And the investments I've been utilizing include the NASDAQ 100 QQQ and the Russell 2000 ETF IWM. Here's a quick breakdown on how the wheel strategy works. We're utilizing both covered calls and cash secured puts. In the beginning, at the top of the wheel, as you can see here, we are holding cash. And holding cash right now is actually not a bad strategy because cash is yielding you upwards of 5%. So we're looking here, we've got holding cash, and when we're holding cash, we are selling cash secured puts. In a cash secured put, we are committing to purchasing shares of an ETF or a stock if the price drops to a specific level by expiration. So we're selling cash secured puts, and at some point along the way, we're going to reach assignment. I mean, we're gonna get assigned, the price is below our cash secured put strike price, and now we are owning the shares. So we are passing down the wheel here from assignment down to the bottom here where we are now holding stock, holding shares of a stock or an ETF, okay? Remember option contracts, 100 shares per contract. So if you have one contract, I now own 100 shares of the underlying stock or ETF. And at this point, we're selling a new type of option. Instead of cash secured puts, we're now selling covered calls. And for me personally, when it comes time to start selling covered calls, I'm going to be as aggressive as possible with, with respect to my basis. For example, let's say I'm talking about IWM, the Russell 2000, and let's say my strike price when I was selling cash secured puts was $200 per share and I got assigned. So now what I'm going to do, no matter what the price, you know, 199, 200, 198, I'm going to immediately then the next day sell a covered call at 200 because my goal is to get back to cash as quickly as possible. Cash gives me a little bit more flexibility and with cash, I also get the yield on the cash and the premium from cash secured puts with Fidelity. So my goal is to then get out of the shares as quickly as possible. So I'll go aggressive on there, but in the event that the price drops, if, if IWM drops from 200 down to 195, I'm still going to strive to stick with my strike price or my, my cost basis, $200 per share for the strike price, even if it gets me less premium. If the price drops significantly, I will start to sell calls below my basis, but I'm going to do so very conservatively. And instead of collecting $50, $60 per day on those calls, I'm willing to accept $15 per day, but I'll do so very conservatively because I want to, if at all possible, avoid assignment below my basis. Then at some point along the way, hopefully sooner rather than later, we then move to the third part of the wheel here where it says assigned uncovered call, meaning that eventually at some point, the price of IWM at expiration is above my strike price, in which case I will then be selling my shares and receiving cash and I'm back to square one where I'm now holding cash and selling cash secured puts. Now, aside from the traditional strategy, I'm doing this very short term. I'm utilizing QQQ or the NASDAQ 100 and IWM, the Russell 2000 ETFs. With IWM, I can sell options on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, three times a week. With QQQ, I can sell five times a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I'm doing so on a daily basis and I'm managing this every day right around 12.45, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It takes me about 10 minutes to manage this and I generate more premium as a result. Now, in addition to the wheel strategy, I've also, starting in April, started piloting a program with the poor man's covered call. And just to make sure we're on the same page with that, the poor man's covered call is essentially a version of a traditional covered call strategy where you own the underlying investment, 
whether it's an ETF or it's an individual stock, and then you sell covered call options to generate income. Now, the variation with the poor man's covered call is instead of owning the shares, you're instead owning a deep in the money call option that due to the high delta that it has essentially operates very closely to the underlying price changes of the stock. And what this does is allows you to use far less capital to then sell covered calls. I will be doing a separate video here breaking down my results from the poor man's covered call strategy for the month of April. So be on the lookout for that video as well. Okay, let's dive into the results for April 2024. So here's the spreadsheet. You can see here at the top that the goal for the month of April was to generate $5,000 of cash flow. And to do that, there were 22 trading days I needed to generate $250 every single day. And what you can see very clearly here in the far right section here is that the month to date or the total monthly average daily cash flow was only $183.58. So I did fall short of my $5,000 per month goal. As you can see here down here in the spreadsheet, we can see all the dates here starting from the 1st all the way to the 30th. We've also got the strategy breakdown right here, whether it's a poor man's covered call or a traditional strategy and the investments, which are almost exclusively, I think they are actually exclusively, IWM and QQQ calls and puts. Here's a breakdown of the portfolio as of right now. It shows here total account value 144,292. This is because I recently in the past day or two withdrew $4,500 from the account because we're starting to pay for some of our larger expenses for our upcoming road trip beginning in June through the end of July. So you'll see here that we've got for IWM and we've also got QQQ. With IWM, I currently own 300 shares and I'm selling covered calls. And then with QQQ, I own 100 shares right here, uh, with a little bit more for, due to a dividend that I received, and I'm selling covered calls on QQQ. Now, above and beyond the traditional right here, you can see that I've also got one, two, three, and four poor man's covered calls in place with IWM. So four poor man's covered calls plus three traditional equals a total of seven contracts for IWM that I write on a daily basis. With QQQ, I have one traditional covered call and two additional poor man's covered calls right here. So total contracts between IWM and QQQ is 10. And this is reflected in this spreadsheet right here. So we've got poor man's covered calls are traditional, you've got the investment type here, and you've got the daily net asset or the daily cash flow generated from each of these investments after buying it back, after any commissions, fees, etc. So here are the total results for the month of April. Total cash flow was $4,182.93. And this is net of any potential assignments or net debits, et cetera. Everything all in net cash flow into the account. And let's go ahead and break this down first off based on how much for the poor man's covered call versus the traditional strategy for those that are interested here. So for poor man's covered calls, total net cash flow here, we add all these up right here, was $2,420.66. And then if we scroll down here and we look at the traditional strategy here, total cash flow was uh, $1,503.13 from the traditional strategy. And then we also had a dividend paid by QQQ in the amount of $114.69. And then uh, month end cash flow from holding cash, because with Fidelity of the ability to double dip and generate cash yield or interest on the cash in addition to selling cash secured puts. So this number is usually in the four, five, six hundred dollar range every month. However, because I was mostly owning the shares of the investments as opposed to cash throughout the most of April 2024, this number was much lower. And then let me go ahead and break down for you the differences between IWM and QQQ with the cash flow here. So we'll go ahead and sort based right here. And you'll notice for IWM, all in both strategies, $1,965.05. And for uh, QQQ, when you factor in traditional and poor man's covered calls here, all in, total was $1,958.74. So very balanced between these two investments. And what you'll notice here is, you know, in the month of April, like I mentioned, you know, the markets didn't really play ball with us. They were dropping a lot or there was a lot of volatility there up and down, but mostly down for the month. And as a result, whenever you're selling covered calls and the market drops below your basis by a significant amount, you have one of three different choices. Number one, you can just decide to hold off on selling any options and say, I'm gonna wait until the market rebounds and comes back up closer to my basis so I can get reasonable premium at the level I bought the shares. There's nothing wrong with that strategy. It's more of a total return based decision. Option number two would be is to say, um, I'm, not, I'm gonna completely disregard my basis and continue to write covered calls and um, if I get assigned below my basis, oh well, my focus is cash flow, not a big deal. 
Nothing wrong with that strategy either. It's more of a cash flow now focused decision. And then the, the third option here is one that I kind of think is a good balance between the two, which is I'm normally writing covered calls at a delta of 25 to 35, and now the market's far below my basis. I'm going to be more conservative. I'm going to continue to sell covered calls, but at a at a delta that's much more conservative that allows me to avoid large volatility swings in the market for the most part. Uh, and that would be at a 10 to 15 delta, which is what I've been doing. And you can see that built into the spreadsheet here, the deltas, 14, 10, 12, 12, 15, 16. There's a few here that are higher, like 55 or 40 or 45. Um, but for the most part, those were only around my basis when the market was closer to my basis. And when it dropped far below that, I went with a much more conservative approach. Here's a look at the daily cash flow throughout the month of April. There was a large swing here that occurred in uh, late April, but this is due to a net debit that occurred where I had to roll and it cost me to do so after the following day. But for the most part, you can see the majority of the cash flow is right here around 200 to 250 right here along the way. So pretty consistent even when the market is not playing ball. And last thing I wanted to show you guys here was the total results for this strategy since I began in December of 2023. I've been tracking every single trade, every assignment, everything to show you kind of what happened since December. So it's December, January, February, March, and April, five months uh, in total now. And the year-to-date return is 15.72%, which you can see right up here. And then the annualized return, meaning how much the returns would be if I continue to do what I did for those five months for the remaining seven months, total for the year would be approximately 37.27%. Now this is this is a cash flow yield, not a total return yield. It factors in any net assignment drag if I get assigned below my basis, all the cash flow in, but not the total return of the over, over um, overarching portfolio value. Again, as a reminder, if you want to join the Patreon community and get more value as an investor who's trying to generate cash flow, make sure to check out the link down in the description below. And if more importantly, you want to get started and you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I have offered this service now. I've got a number of people taking advantage of it, getting a ton of value out of it. If you want to learn more about that, check out the exclusive access tier and the VIP tier as well. More information down in the link in the description. Hopefully you found some value in this video, guys. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to as many comments as possible on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day, and thanks for watching.